Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another Peaceful Solution Teacher Certification class. Please be seated. Welcome to all those who are joining us online as well on the World Wide Web. <laughs> I remember when that was such a uh, seemed like so far, far away thing. World Wide Web. And now it's pretty much on, uh, you know, we're almost pretty much continuously connected to it through some means, uh, whether through, um, you know, even through banking and, and all types of means, uh, including what we're going through today or what some of you who are watching uh, now online are connected through the web uh, on Facebook. But welcome, everyone. Welcome to the uh, teacher certification course. I hope... Um, uh, I do hope we have some new people that are, are joining us for the first time, and um, if you are, we would encourage you to go back and uh, re-watch uh, the previous lessons. Uh, as William mentioned, I think it was, what, 2020, November 2020, that we started this. So we've been at this for quite a while, and we are in the third of five, of five units that are in this intermediate series. Um, of uh, character education, which is uh, self-control. Now, we just got started with that unit last class, if you um, were following along. Um, and this is uh, unit three, and we got through the introduction, <clears throat> um, the preface, the introduction, how to use this manual, um, and so forth, uh, showing, laying that foundation again as this is a teacher certification course, so laying that foundation for each teacher to understand how to go about using this book. In other words, to get the very most out of the book, you have to learn how to use it. You know, it's kind of like, uh, um, uh, you know, cell phones nowadays. You know, I, I have an iPhone and I probably, uh, I think my, my phone, I use kind of like what they say of our brains, 10%, you know, of what it's actually capable of. Uh, and then the phone, it, it typically, well, yeah, they used to. I don't know if they do anymore. Uh, when, when they first came out, they came with a book, you know, a little book that you can open up and you can read and see all the little features that were in the iPhone. Well, nowadays, you, you take the, the phone out, you throw the book away, and then you just start going at the phone, right, because you're excited to make phone calls or to do this or to do that. Well, you know, you don't get the full use out of it if you don't read and educate yourself on everything that it's designed to do, all the features that it has and how it can benefit you. Now, we're talking about character development here. And as teachers, in order for us to get the most out of our lessons, in order for us to develop the greatest or the highest degree, otherwise, other words known as moral excellence in our students, we have to educate ourselves in how to educate them. Okay, and this is the, this is a, a very important aspect to keep in mind because just because we're, you know, in a in a course to become teachers, does not mean that our education is over once we've completed that course. There's continuing, even in the world of um, of educators, uh, they have to go ever so often, and we've taught at many of their continuing education courses and kind of re up, so to speak, uh, to stay up on current um, uh, curricula and so forth. Uh, their own personal to development to help them to become better teachers. And it's the same thing in regards to character education here. Well, we're in for some delicious treats tonight as we move into this unit on uh, self-control. And um, hopefully we'll get, uh, we'll get, well, I know we'll get into it, but um, be patient because like uh, William said, this is going to take a little bit more time because uh, as was mentioned in the previous class, this unit that we're covering right here is the foundation for all other positive character traits, all right? And it's a very, very, very important unit. All the units are important, don't get me wrong, but it's kind of like the, 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 the tie that binds all the other units together, okay? And, um, and, and it's, it's important that we pay attention to it, especially as teachers, uh, but also to stress these things in the mind of our students so that they can understand why self-control is essential. And, and keep these words in mind because they're used in what we're going to be covering here in this lesson. Why is it essential? Why is it critical? Why is it vital Okay, uh, to developing and maintaining a positive character? Well, let's look over, and we're going to start back on page um, 
lesson plan one, page B. And this is where uh, William left off, gave us a nice spot to start with today. And we're still under the introdu introduction uh, to the unit. And we're going to look down to the um, one, two, third, third paragraph, which is <coughs> pretty much the <clears throat> almost last paragraph before we get into the concepts that are covered here. Um, and it says here, teaching children the importance of using self-control gives them the skills, knowledge, and motivation. Now, uh, you know, if you back up just a little bit here um, to the previous uh, paragraph, let's see here. Yeah, in the previous paragraph, I was going to pick a point, but let's just read the whole paragraph. It says, this unit on self-control was written to assist you, that is the teacher, in teaching moral values in a clear, concise way that adolescents can easily identify with, in a clear and concise way. Self-control is one of the most significant subjects you can teach because it is needed in every aspect of life, all right? Um, it, you know, and you think about the other concepts, so to speak, uh, the other units that are covered, uh, you know, there are times when, you know, a person might not necessarily have to accept a particular thing or accept a particular person or, you know, uh, you know, there, there are certain times where um, a particular concept might not be immediately in front of them where they need to put it into practice. But self-control is something that's always needed, right? Self-control is something that's always needed. Um, that is, and to help us to, to uphold the other positive character traits as well. But it says here, self-control is one of the most significant subjects you can teach because it is needed in every aspect of life. Self-control lays the foundation for children to learn many other positive qualities some of which include responsibility, <coughs> respect, <clears throat> and determination. Responsibility, respect, and determination, which, spoiler alert, we're going to cover two of those three uh, units uh, after this one here. Uh, so, you know, get yourself ready. So again, let's read that again, that last paragraph. It says, teaching children the importance of using self-control gives them the skills. Now remember here, just to refresh your mind, uh, this word skill means the ability to do an activity or a, um, a job well. The ability to do an activity or a job well, especially because you've practiced it. All right. This is where skills are. Doing. You've heard this, the statement, you know, sharpen your skills, develop your skills. All right. And remember, the skill of what we're learning here is not just merely positive character. Positive character is what you have, but the skill is to, you know, be able to distinguish between positive and negative influences, be able to uh, avoid conflicts, be able to control your anger, be able to communicate with someone effectively, right? These are skills that are put into practice because a person has developed a positive character and now they have the ability to, um, uh, what's the word, um, uh, impact society in a positive way with these skills, kind of like, um, you know, uh, you know, Henry Ford and his skills, right? Look how he impacted society in a positive way. I mean, you know, for thousands of years, everybody was riding horses and, and, uh, and walking everywhere they went. I think if he would not have, it, have mass produced the automobile as, as he did, uh, we would still be doing that. But in all honesty, I'm pretty thankful that we're able to get to point A and point B a lot quicker, right? Um, you know, the same thing with aviation and airplanes with the Wright brothers. Uh, look at the technology that we have with, uh, you know, Microsoft and, and many people who have done things that have impacted our society in a positive way uh, with, their, with their technology. Now, in a lot of cases, people, because of a lack of morality, have taken pretty much all forms of technology right and used it to the detriment of themselves and others used it to bring harm to themselves and others so again we have to be able to look and differentiate and to know it's not the technology that was necessarily the bad thing but it's how it was used right um i don't know if people ever drove their horses into 
you know, people back in the day. But, you know, <coughs> you know, surely they used horses to, um, you know, uh, ride into an area and, and fire a weapon, you know, shoot at an enemy or fire an arrow or shoot an arrow at, at their enemy. Right. So the means through which immorality is practiced might have changed. But immorality as in itself as a concept, you know, it's been there. It's been in existence for a very long time, right? And so our goal here is to help the students to have the skills, that is the ability to do an activity or a job well, not just to do it, but to do it well, right? To practice, to be, uh, to have this moral excellence, right? To where they're always seeking to do the very best that they can in demonstrating their positive character traits in any situation, whether it's with their 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 peer, their fellow uh, pupil in school, whether it's in interacting with a teacher, their parents, or a stranger, you know, in, in society. Remember, they have this skill and they do it well because they have practiced it. So practice, practice, practice. Remember what we, we talked about in the character unit. Um, this is how you, you hone and you sharpen um, uh, a skill in any, in any trade or industry. And then here uh, gives them the skills and the knowledge. Now, remember what we covered in the acceptance unit on page 11 there, uh, showing that this knowledge is power. It gives us the ability to discern between right and wrong, to discern between what's beneficial and negative uh, or positive and negative, beneficial and harmful and so forth. <coughs> and knowledge, <clears throat> which comes through education, uh, education in whatever subject that you're, you know, you're learning, whether it's character development, whether it's math, whether it's uh, doing a particular job, it'll enable you to uh, do that job successfully or to be, po uh, yeah, to do it successfully. And then lastly here, and motivation, right? Uh, gives them the skills, knowledge, and motivation. And you think about this word motivation, um, and this sometimes is, you know, if you're a parent and you've ever had to uh, deal with waking up your teenage son or daughter <laughs> in the morning, you realize that they're not very motivated to do it, right? Especially if it's to go to school or they have to wake up to do chores. But lo and behold, you know, they're going to be going camping this weekend or something or we're going on a fishing trip. You get up, man, they're already up, you know? Hell, they've even got breakfast made. The house is clean. <laughs> you know, they're motivated because there's something that they want to do. Now, this is a little bit of a challenge, but it can be done. And this is this, you know, a lot of this weight bears on the shoulder of the teachers to present this in a way that's kind of exciting, you know, and interesting to the student, right? You want them to have this motivation from within, right? The desire from within to, to learn this, to put it into practice, and it really makes a huge difference in their minds, a huge pre impression in their minds when they take something you've taught them, put it into practice, see the benefit of putting that concept into practice. They can't wait to come back and tell you, hey, you know, so, you know, Mr. Such and Such, you know, or Miss Such and Such, I, I, I ran into this the other day and I remember what we were taught in the class on acceptance or self control or influences or whatever. And I put it into practice and man, it worked, you know, and that gets them excited about it. And so but we have to kind of lead them to that because, you know, the, the, the natural tendency is to do what feels great. Right. Uh, kind of to um, go with the crowd, you know, to do it with what's exciting and sitting down and learning for a lot of young people. It's just not very exciting. So as teachers, we need to, you know. We kind of need to step up our game a little bit, you know, and be exciting for the to the child, the student, and make the class very interesting because this will help build motivation in them. And first, it might come from an external source, motivation, that is, you, we as the teacher, motivating and kind of hyping them up and so forth and getting them excited about it. And then once they start to see it, then that's going to come from inside. And then that gets them to the point where now they're kind of like, on autopilot, so to speak. Not that they don't ever have to do anything else, but it's an, in, an internal drive from within them to <coughs> learn these concepts and put them into practice so that they can develop this character that they're learning here. It made me think about um, um, 
uh, in regard to this word motivation, it made me think of the, uh, the saying, um, and we use it here too as well, teach a man to fish, you know, give a man a fish and you feed him for a day. Teach a man to fish and you feed him for a lifetime, right? Uh, first, you have to edu educate the person on what they can do, right? And then once they see that they can do it, then they're excited about it. They continue to maintain that on their own, right? They're not dependent upon you to come and give them a fish every day, right? Uh, they're excited. They're motivated because now not only can they provide a fish for themselves, but through this newly acquired skill that they have, they can actually provide it for others or teach others how to provide it for themselves. And this ties us into, as we covered in the character unit, the positive ripple effect, okay? And, and, and it spreads very quickly and like William said before, you might not always see every aspect of what you presented to a student in the class, but you know, rest assured, those seeds that are planted in their minds, you know, they're not, they're just not lying there, not doing anything, not producing any effect. Okay. Uh, sometimes they might sit in the ground for a long period of time, and then a situation will come that will water that seed and it'll sprout up almost overnight. Okay. And they'll remember what you told them, and they're going to be very thankful for it. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, you'll be thankful, too, because you've actually contributed to society, society in a way that's going to come back and benefit you and those, um, uh, those who uh, you care about very, very, very dearly. So it says here, in motivation, they need to avoid many of the negative consequences of acting impulsively, <clears throat> acting impulsively and making wrong choices. And remember that impulsively simply means to... Um, act without considering the consequences, to, to act on something without considering the consequences. All right, so let's look down here. It says here, other concepts <clears throat> covered in this unit, this unit, all right? Remember, this unit, because you'll see this word unit, and you'll see the words lessons, this lesson. So there's seven lessons in the unit. Um, seven lessons comprise the entire unit. So in this unit, from chapter one to chapter seven, um, some of the thing, other concepts that are covered are understanding what emotions are and why we need to control them. Okay, what emotions are, because remember, as we covered in the previous classes, self-control is controlling your thoughts, your feelings, and your actions. Okay, but understanding what our emotions are, because emotions play a huge part in decision-making. And a lot of people skip right past the thought process and make decisions merely based on emotions. And they get themselves in a lot of, a tr a lot of trouble by doing that, right? And I think we can look back into our lives and remember <laughs> you know, emotional decisions that we made and the consequences that followed either immediately or possibly even years later, okay? Um, and, and, and so this, <clears throat> this point right here is covered in chapter two. <clears throat> Uh, we'll be going over emotions. And the next point here, it says, the use of self-control to appropriately resolve conflicts and manage anger. All right. Uh, and this is going to be um, uh, chapters three and four. We're going to be looking at that as well. Um, but to appropriately, appropriately resolve conflicts. And the key word there is appropriately, because some people feel that the best way to solve conflicts is by feeding people. Right. And I'm not talking about food. I'm talking about what people call a knuckle sandwich. Right. <laughs> that doesn't solve problems in their minds. They might think, you know, well, I'll knock his lights out. That'll shut him up. I don't have to hear it about it anymore. You know what they say? Forget about it. Right. But we're talking about appropriately. Remember, everything that's presented in here comes from the standpoint of making a positive choice. Negative should never be the option in any of our students' minds. Now, it is because that's what society teaches them. It is because that's probably, to some degree, what they've learned in the home as well. It is because those are the influences that they hear coming from their peers, seeing on advertisements, uh, you know, in the cartoons and the video games and so forth, in the music. But we're, as teachers here, to set the record straight. So we want them to be able to use self-control, which is all three of these things, controlling your thoughts, your feelings, and your actions, 
to appropriately resolve conflicts and manage anger. You need to manage it, right? Anger is not something that necessarily should be suppressed. You know, you can't ignore anger. And we're going to get into this when we get, and I don't want to jump ahead, you know, uh, in regards to the emotions part, but a lot of times people look at emotions in such a, a negative way. You know, it's in society, you know, you're, you're, you're taught, you know, be a man, be macho. You know, you don't have, men don't have emotions. We don't cry in movies, you know. Uh, you know, don't, don't, don't never let them see you sweat. You know, these kind of sayings that are out there, you know, uh, but emotions are there, you know, they're, they're what we have. All emotions simply do is they tell us there's something that we enjoy or something that we don't agree with. That's it, right? They in themselves aren't bad, but it's how we use those emotions, how we handle those emotions, what we do with those emotions or in regards to those emotions, which are influences, right? They're influences, uh, which will determine how we make our decisions, okay? So all these things we have to keep in mind, and it's a lot, but, you know, it's going to be broken down in, in bite-sized pieces for the student as we move forward. But, um, but, uh, but, but that's what we're talking about, managing anger, not, not eliminating. And, and, hey, if you eliminate anger, no problem. All right. <laughs> you know, no problem. If we get to the point where we don't get angry anymore, that's a OK. You know, but if you still have anger from time to time, yeah, that's a OK, too. Right. Just make sure. And the goal is to make sure we teach them how to manage it appropriately. All right. And so that we're going to be covering that in chapters three and four. And then um, uh, the next point there is how to apply self-control <clears throat> to discern between positive <coughs> positive and negative influences how to apply self-control to discern to discern uh, that is to be able to, to to see clearly you know between positive and negative influences and of course in doing this this will prevent what we just covered in the previous um, uh, paragraph there when you discern between positive and negative influences this will help a person who has the goal of putting into practice the positive character traits that they've learned from the peaceful solution. If, if that's their goal, then once they discern between a positive and negative influence, that'll keep them from acting impulsively, right? That'll keep them from uh, making an uneducated decision because the goal is to get as much of the facts about the particular topic, or in this case, an influence, before you make a decision. Okay, and, and that's a part of that discernment process, and we'll see that in chapter five. Then uh, the next point there, understanding how to how self control is applicable on a societal and global scale. And remember, this word societal means a community of people with shared laws, values, and traditions. Okay, so how uh, this is applicable on a societal and global scale, right? Because uh, when when society as a whole practices self-control just think about it think about a small society a uh, community or group of people right that take these concepts and diligently practice them on a daily basis how much more peaceful it would be you wouldn't have to worry about your doors being unlocked right you wouldn't have to worry about uh, you know uh, uh, dropping your wallet somewhere you wouldn't have to worry about your children or your family being molested when you're not around, right? You won't have to worry about <clears throat> the prices of, of um, you know, the commodities, the, the items that you need on a regular basis having to be so high because people won't be stealing, right? They'll be practicing self-control. So as a result of people not stealing, now the grocer or whoever the, the, the person, the store owner, won't have to mark the prices up uh, on the items that are sold to you because you, the customer who didn't steal, now has to pay for the theft of somebody else, right? So prices would be lower. Things would be more affordable. People would be able to enjoy life uh, whether you've had little or whether you had much, right? And then so, again, we talk about that ripple effect, that positive ripple effect when a community or a society of people actually uh, practices self-control. And we're going to look at that in verse 6, or, I mean, uh, chapter 6, excuse me. Um, and then lastly here, um, how society can use self-control to care for and preserve the environment, okay? 
uh, because we can look at uh, we covered a little bit of it in the um, in the character unit <clears throat> um, we can look at many many places um, we watched a documentary not that long ago on um, I think it's the Ganges River in, in India and uh, it's it's a very large uh, river uh, it's, it's used by a lot of people they have a uh, religious ceremonies and things like that that they go there ever so so often so many times a year but it's used as a as kind of a a, a vein of life for the people right um, and, and if it was used for that purpose that that would be totally fine I mean cities and towns and so forth were always uh, kind of founded b close by natural resources water being one of them you need water a lot you need water to live you know you need water to survive um, but sadly, you know, so much pollution is dumped in that river on a daily basis. I mean, millions and millions and millions of gallons of, of human waste and toxic chemicals and things of that nature are dumped, you know, upstream from where people downstream are getting water to cook for their family or to wash, you know, bathe and launder in or to wash their clothes. You know, they're taking water from that very same stream. And so if those uh, you know, uh, factories or maybe even the, the city planners would take into consideration, you know, how to properly dispose of these things in a way that would not negatively impact the environment, you know, I pretty much uh, guarantee that that river would be much, much cleaner than what it is right now, okay? And so we can just, and that's just one, one example. Um, you know, there's a, you know, places all throughout the United States that are dealing with these same things. And that's going to be in Chapter 7, all right? So these are the, 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 the other concepts that are going to be brought forth in this unit uh, on self-control. So let's look at that last paragraph there. <clears throat> it says, in this unit, students will explore through news articles, scenarios, songs, and thought-provoking questions the importance of self-control and how to apply it to their their daily lives. <clears throat> Encourage students to take turns reading sections in their handbooks to help them make the class lively and interesting. All right, lively and interesting. And then lastly, it says there, <clears throat> it says, uh, reinforce positive moral behavior at every opportunity. All right, so this is what the lesson is going to teach. This is what it's telling you to, to give the, the students the opportunity to do. And then as the teacher, as you see, situations arise, right? Continuously reinforce the positive moral behavior at every opportunity that you've learned. Now, how can you do that unless you have gone through the character and acceptance unit? How are you going to even know what positive you know, moral behavior is unless we've covered those previous uh, classes? Because so far, we haven't gotten into any of that here in the uh, self-control unit because we haven't even gotten into the lesson yet. So again, you know, like it was brought in the previous class, you know, everything needs to be brought forth, gently leading from one lesson to the next. We can't skip over anything. Otherwise, it could, it could create a little snag in the, in the child's understanding or the student's understanding. Uh, this word reinforce here, because <clears throat> it says reinforce positive moral behavior at every opportunity. Um, it means to strengthen by additional assistance, all right? When you reinforce something, right? You've seen, uh, you know, they, they reinforce, uh, you know, bridges, you know, make them stronger, uh, you know, add wood to the trestles or things of that nature, uh, reinforce the foundation so it can be stronger to support the house because maybe uh, the land shifted or, or maybe they're going to add more to the structure, okay? So it's to strengthen by additional assistance, material, or support, okay? And so these are things as, <clears throat> as a teacher, you know, we can bring into the class to, it, it, it ties right into the lesson that is being covered uh, the additional material is already provided for us here in the Peaceful Solution, or as we've mentioned before, bringing in the, the articles that, that back up and support the lesson that is being taught, right? The scenarios or the examples, because, you know, again, you know, these, these were written in the early 2000s, so there are some things that are a little more relevant today 
as far as uh, you know, some of the the articles and so forth, <clears throat> than than twenty something years ago. A lot of the students you're teaching, they weren't even alive at that time, right? Uh, so you have to kind of bring in things that are current and and things that they can relate to. Remember, that's what we said. You know, they they need to be able to relate to this information uh, so that they can see it clearly and make a connection with what's going on in their life, what's taking place in society, what's going on in their world, and how they can apply this lesson that they're going to be learning here in this class. <clears throat> uh, the word also means uh, support, this word reinforce, and also means make stronger or more pronounced. Make stronger or more pronounced. And um, this last definition says, if something reinforces an idea or opinion, it provides more proof or support for it and makes it seem true all right it provides more proof or support for it and makes it seem true and I thought it was interesting that they used in that definition that word seem true right because uh, um, there is uh, positive reinforcement and negative reinforcement right uh, you know you can negatively reinforce an idea that leads a person down the road of immorality, right? You can negatively reinforce, like a person might say, hey, listen, you know, if you pickpocket, you're actually going to become a little more richer, right? What if it occurs when that person starts pickpocketing and they notice they're, they're, well, they're probably not putting it in the bank, but, you know, their, their slush fund is getting bigger. Well, that concept is going to be reinforced in their mind that, hey, Man, pickpocketing actually does make me a richer person, you know, or it actually gives them more money, you know, doesn't make them richer, right? Um, and so it makes it seem true that doing that is the right thing. Well, of course, we're talking about positive reinforcement here, you know, reinforcement that that builds and directs the student's mind toward the lesson that is at, at, at hand, okay, not to get them off on anything else. So just keep that in mind, you know, there's always those two categories, that positive and that negative that things fall into. We want to make them aware of the negative, but our focus is on or accentuating on the positive. So let's look at page LP or lesson plan one, page C. And the title here is chapter one, self-control starts with, now notice there, you. It starts with you. And this is, this is the theme that you'll see throughout, you know, all five of these units. Um, in, the, in the character unit, you know, more than meets the eye. We talk about uh, character, what it is, and how it's developed in us, right? Uh, then in the acceptance unit, we talk about accepting me, accepting you, okay? And then, then we get into the respect unit and the responsibility after that. Um, we're going to be laying that same foundation, right? And understanding what the concept is that is being presented and then how it applies to us. Right, because first off, we've got to learn these things and and the and the application of them in our own lives, and then start to learn how to put them into practice as we start interacting with other people, other people in the environment. So this is under note to the teacher. Self control is essential. Remember, I said remember those words: essential, critical, vital, and so forth. Uh, this word essential means absolutely necessary extremely important absolutely necessary extremely important very important self-control is essential to character development remember what we covered on page uh, uh, the previous page here it lays the foundation how important is a foundation for a house if you just start building walls right on the dirt just just dirt Okay, you didn't do no preparation for it or anything like that. And you start building walls and then setting, you know, trusses and, and, and beams and so forth on that house. How strong do you think that house is going to be after the first rain? <laughs> Probably not going to be very strong. Okay, so just as a foundation is important to a house, self control is important to the building and development of, uh, of character and all other positive traits. In fact, it is the foundation as we see here, upon which all other positive traits are built, okay, ties them both in. So if self-control is that essential and that important, why isn't it taught first? Someone might ask. We're going to cover that because the answer is in the book here. 
So the need to teach self-control has become critical. Now, there's another word there, critical. And you've heard this used before, you know, in regards to maybe expressing a situation, right? Um, or a threat level, uh, you know, a threat level is critical or even a person's condition and they're in the hospital, right? They're in critical condition. Uh, and it can mean several different, um, it has several different meanings, but in regards to what we're talking about in this lesson here, it, it, it has, uh, it means indispensable indispensable all right the need to teach self-control has become indispensable it also means vital it's very vital um vital just means something that's necessary for life right something and we'll cover that here in a little bit uh it, it is being in or approaching a state of crisis being in or approaching a state of crisis so in regards to this, what we're learning here, the need to teach self-control has become very vital because society is, uh, I would say, in a state of crisis, right? Uh, they're no longer approaching a state of crisis. They're kind of in a state of crisis in many aspects of society. You know, a crisis situation is one where there's it seems like there's no solution. You know, of course, there is a solution, but people have to be willing to learn it and to apply it. You know, it says this is, has become critical, especially as we see the ever-increasing amounts of disrespectful behavior in the classroom, behavior that both um, that disrupts both teaching and learning. All right, and this is this totally undermines the whole purpose of a classroom, because the purpose of the classroom is for the students to go there and to learn okay and and when disrespect takes place within the classroom it actually steals that opportunity from the student and it actually uh, takes that uh, opportunity of teaching it steals it from the teacher as well uh, believe it or not there are some students that actually like to go to school and learn you know they want to go and get their lessons you know they don't want to go to school and fool around okay they enjoy learning and so when someone goofs off in the class and starts acting up and is disrespectful to their peers or disrespectful to their um, the teacher, disrespectful, showing even disrespect to themselves, it takes that away because now that time spent teaching has to be spent disciplining. So let's look at the next paragraph there because we see again this uh, ties right into critical here. It is vital. It is vital. Uh, this means of utmost importance, concerned with, or necessary to the maintenance of life. Remember when you go to the, you know, if you've ever been to the doctor, uh, if you come in or say a paramedic comes, you've been in a car accident or something takes place, one of the things they do is they check your vital signs, right? They, they check signs of life, all right? Without those things, well, it pretty much tells them this guy's not alive, right? And so, what we're learning here is that <clears throat> it is vital for students to learn that as they mature, it is their responsibility to control how they behave and interact. This is important for them to have a successful life. How they behave and interact is vital to them having or maintaining life. Okay? Uh, they can't take self-control and dismiss it because of an emotion. And we're going to cover why that's important, too, later on as we move forward through the, through the lessons. No longer is it the sole responsibility of those in control, uh, those in authority, excuse me, to control their behavior, meaning that at a certain stage in their lives, someone did have to be the responsible person to control their behavior because they have not learned or had not come to the point where they're accountable for and able to, you know, make decisions and control their behavior. So as a parent, you know, you have to do certain things and enact certain things in order to kind of bring your child's behavior under control, right? You can't just let them run around in the, in, you know, in the street because they're frustrated because they couldn't have a popsicle or something like that. Right, because they can endanger their lives. You know, run out in the street, get hit by a car, or something like that. 
you know, or, or run around the house and fall down the stairs. I mean, there's many different things that, um, that take place when a, when a toddler has a tantrum. So what does the parent have to do? They have to take that toddler and maybe set them in the chair and you know, put them in their, their high chair with their five point harness on, you know, <laughs> you know, put them in a, a timeout or something until they calm down because they have not developed that, that maturity yet to understand that they have to control their behavior. You know, and not controlling it can lead to harm to themselves and others. Um, so no longer is it the, response, the sole responsibility of those in authority to control their behavior. Because as young adults, they are now accountable for their own actions. You know, and it's also important for them to understand that, all right, they went from this phase of toddler to, you know, being a little bit older and, and uh, you know... Um, guess you kind of go into the child stage and you get into the adolescent stage and then you know young adult adult and so forth you know um but if they don't take these lessons seriously and put them into practice they're going to put themselves in the situation where someone else will have to control their behavior later okay if they don't control their behavior now themselves as they learn these things someone else will have to control their hate behavior later aka uh, you know in school suspension uh, juvenile detention or even prison right because they're not taking the time to you know in this case someone who, who is being taught it you know everybody else hasn't been taught these things but um, you know to put these things into practice you know, and it's a sad situation when people disregard these things and they go out and they make decisions and get themselves in trouble, you know, and they think back and say, man, you know, I should have I should have made a better choice. You know, I, I, I knew what I needed to do, but, you know, my homies, you know, I couldn't let them down or whatever the case might have been. Or I couldn't let no one disrespect me. You know, I couldn't look like a, a you know, a, you know, a sissy in front of my friends or whatever it might have been. OK, uh, and all these things are fleeting. You know, they mean absolutely nothing, because like it was mentioned in the previous classes, you know, most of those friends won't even be there, you know, in five or 10 years. You know, when you're in trouble, they're going to be out like the wind. So it's important, you know, to re uh, stress in their minds, you know, that that self-control starts with them. It starts with them controlling their thoughts, their feelings and, of course, their behavior. Because as young adults, they are now accountable for their own actions. Now, other concepts covered in this lesson, so we're not just talking about the entire unit here, we're talking about this particular lesson, lesson number one, are how morality applies to self-control. Now, you know, as a teacher, we can easily go back to chapter one in the character unit and refresh in the minds of our students what that morality is, right? Uh, and, and the moral principles that we covered in, in Unit 1 and the three basic categories of morality, uh, the behavior and the attitude uh, towards life and, and possessions and property and the environment, okay, and how, uh, how important these things are and, and in following the rules and putting into practice these positive character traits that display morality, that display our desire or willingness to uphold the rules. So how morality applies to self-control. Another point here, a concept is the role of self-control in the development of other positive character traits. Okay, and we're going to cover uh, those positive character traits as well. And then um, developing self-control begins with controlling negative thoughts. All right. Like William mentioned, um, you know, as a teacher, you might have your students for 45 minutes or an hour a week. And then the other 160 something hours, you know, they're subject to being bombarded continuously with negative influences. Well, those negative influences are going to plant seeds that will spring forth in thoughts later on in that student's mind. Now, they're going to have to be able to recognize not just the fact that it's a thought, but is this thought positive? You know, is it beneficial? Is it helpful? Does it support the development and building of my positive character? Does it support me in becoming successful in life and being a benefit to society? Or is this something that's negative? Is this something that can bring harm to myself, others, or the environment? You know, is this going to cause embarrassment or shame? Is it going to prevent me from achieving my positive goals, right? 
which, like we covered over here, they have to be able to discern between the two. And those negative thoughts, they can't necessarily um, control all the influences that they're bombarded with. But as we're going to see as we move forward in this, they can control their thoughts. You know, we have the ability, we have the power to control the thoughts that go on in this head. Now, at first, it might seem like a daunting task, you know, because so many thoughts go in and out of our mind continuously, you know, throughout the day, all throughout the day. Even when you're by yourself, you know, especially seems like when you're by yourself, there's never a time when you're sitting there not thinking about anything. You're thinking about something, you know. Oh, man, one of my strings are longer on my shoe than the other one, you know, or what am I going to eat for supper? Or, you know, like, can you believe the way that guy looked at me that way? What, what's his problem? You know, there's always going to be something going on in your mind, right? And not necessarily is there something you're going to act on, but we have to be able to kind of recognize and filter those thoughts that come through our mind and control those negative thoughts because negative thoughts can lead us to doing things that will bring harm to ourselves, right? And we covered that previously, and we'll cover it a little bit in here. You know, you know a lot of people do self-harm because of negative thoughts okay so in first and foremost being able to control those thoughts then we're going to get into chapter two which that comes later you're going to see how it leads into the emotions all right last paragraph there it says as educators <clears throat> and role models we have the unique opportunity to fully prepare our students for the future by providing them with both academic skills and character education, because the other is necessary too, the, the, the reading and the writing and the math. Uh, they wouldn't, uh, it, it makes it a lot easier for them to go through this being able to read, right? So it, th those things are important as well, but character education also. Uh, this combination will ensure that they are not only capable of reaching all their goals, but that they will also be morally responsible adults who have respect for themselves and others and that, and that reminds me of what we covered here or what was mentioned in the previous class here just for uh, you know your notes or you know um, write down in the book there uh, LP1E of the character unit and procedure one when they when they first start getting into this unit on character it says explain to students that during the course of this program they will learn that developing a positive moral character notice is the first step towards accepting themselves and others, controlling their behavior, respecting society and the environment, and making responsible choices. Okay, making responsible choices. All right, so we want them to become more morally responsible adults who have respect for themselves and others. Okay, so that, that finishes up or concludes that note to the teacher there um, on lesson plan one page C. So let's turn over to lesson plan one, page E. Now you can read lesson plan one, page D for yourself, but there's nothing on there. So, <laughs> but all the pages are still numbered. So we're going to look at lesson plan, uh, lesson plan one, page E, and it starts uh, with self-control. This is the title of the lesson. Self-control starts with you. And of course, the purpose and objective here. Now this is something that's given in the beginning of every lesson because this tells the teacher remember we're reading in the teacher's manual here the student's workbook doesn't have any of this information in it okay this tells us as the teacher what is our goal right what is our goal with this lesson what do we want to accomplish in, in putting in the minds of our students at the end of this lesson and that is your purpose and your objective and it is students will learn what self-control is all right so that's one of the things they're going to learn what self-control is then they're going to learn why it's important, what it is, and why it's important. Okay, so those are two things there. And you can keep this in your mind, you know, if you underline those things as you go through the lessons, because this will stick out to you as a teacher, because you know what the purpose or the goal or the objective is. They will also learn, so this is the third one here, that controlling their thoughts is an important part of practicing self-control. So we have three things that we're going to see that are kind of the 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 um, uh, the high points of the lesson here in, in this purpose and goals is what is self-control why is it important and controlling your thoughts as an important part of practicing self-control 
All right, so those are three things. So of course, the materials that are gonna be needed for the lesson is the student's handbook. And then we get into the first procedure here. The first procedure, which in you know pretty much every lesson is to go back and to cover what the previous lesson was. In this case, since we're starting a brand new lesson, you know, we're talking about the covering of the um, uh, review of the previous units on character and acceptance. Now, you ask the students the following questions, and if you remember the question that I asked earlier, um, you know, if self-control is so important, you know, why isn't it the first lesson taught? Well, let's look at here on this question, this very first question that we're going to look at that we as the teacher will ask the students, you know, ask them the following questions. Why is it important to develop a positive moral character? Because positive moral character is what we got in the first unit, right, on character. What is, what is character? How is character developed? What is the difference between character and personality? How do influences affect your character? How does your family, your environment, right, your, your, your choices, your influences, all these things, how do they affect your character, okay? So why is developing a positive moral character, why is it important, excuse me, to develop a positive moral character? And of course, you're going to get lots of different answers from your students, right? Because if they've been paying attention and they've been with you from the very beginning of this, you know, you're probably going to get quite a bit of feedback from them, okay? And you're going to get different points of view. And of course, remember, the goal is to um, uh, encourage, you want to encourage them to participate, right? Don't ever, don't ever shut a student down if they might say something that's a little off. You know, as a teacher, you kind of have to use a little bit of tact and wisdom, you know, if they're a little bit off, then, you know, kind of encourage them for participating and redirect that their answer, you know, in the class, in fact, because they heard that, an that answer, back to what's being brought forth in the lesson, you know, and you could do it in a way that doesn't cause embarrassment to the student, okay? You never want to embarrass your students. Otherwise, in a lot of cases, you're just going to shut them off. You know, they're not going to want to answer. They're not going to want to participate. And in some cases, it, it kind of shuts off their process of even wanting to learn anymore, okay? Because some people are very, very sensitive, uh, you know, when they're, when they're embarrassed. So, you, you know, as teachers, we have to use uh, tact and diplomacy and, and the skills that are being taught here in the Peaceful Solution. So we notice here, um, one of the answers are, that are given here in the Peaceful Solution is developing a positive moral character. Notice here, it builds stability. It actually builds stability within the person, okay? How, how many have ever been, I haven't personally, but I've seen videos. How many have ever experienced an earthquake? I mean, I mean a real, you know, earthquake where stuff is shattering and things are falling. All right, we got a, we got a couple people out there, you know. Um, now, most earthquakes around here are like 3.2 or, you know, 4.1. You, you hardly even feel them, and there's so much space in Texas, you know, you'd, you know, you'd, you'd be kind of rare to even feel anything. Um, um, I, I, was, I was just thinking about a um, long time ago when I, when I used to frequent some of these uh, time-wasting parks. Uh, they had uh, rides that you could actually get on and they would like spin around and go up and down and everything and it was it was very difficult to stand up you know on those rides and it makes rides and it makes me think of of a lack of stability you know when you don't have stability or, or even uh i think most of us have been in situations where you've been you, you've been in um really windy areas you know i don't know if you've been in areas where the wind is blowing so hard that you would you know topple over but you know you've got to get up around 60 70 80 mile an hour winds but but when you don't have stability, you know, it's very difficult to, um, you know, stay focused in a positive direction, right? Because you're wanting to go this way, but the pressure is pushing you this way, or it's knocking you down in this way, or it's, you know, sweeping you off your feet, right? And you have to keep getting up and starting over again, or, you know, kind of finding your focus point. Well, character, a positive character, a positive moral character gives a person stability, right? Now, now they kind of have a gauge. Now they're able to distinguish between what's right and what's wrong. If their goal is to go forward in the right direction, well, now they've got a benchmark to look at, okay? And it gives them that stability uh, and allows one to make right choices and have success in life. 
to make right choices and have success. You can't make right choices if you don't know the difference between what are right choices and what are wrong choices. Okay, And that's the foundation that's kind of laid at the very beginning of this with character. And that's why it's so important because you've got to know, you know, in order to practice self-control, you've got to know You've got to have the stability. You've got to have the foundation to be able to make right choices, to be able to distinguish between what's right and wrong. How are you going to practice self-control in making a right choice if you don't know what a right choice is, right? And so that's given at the very beginning there. And then um, um, if you look at the letter B there, it says uh, one of the questions um, that you would ask your students is, do you have control over every aspect of your life? Do you have control over every aspect of your life? Now, you might get some smart Alex out there and say, yeah, I control everything I do. I control when I wake up. I control when I go to sleep. You know, <laughs> you know, let something take place within their body that, that uh, they have no control over. They'll see how quickly that goes away, right? Uh, you know, let your, uh, let, let your, your, everybody, anybody ever, ever had a Charlie horse? <laughs> you know, anybody ever plan for having a Charlie horse? I'm going to go ahead and have a Charlie horse today, get it out for the rest, just get it out of the way for the rest of the week. You know, you don't have control over that. You're sitting there minding your own business. The next thing you know, it feels like Charlie's horse actually kicked you, right? Uh, you can't control that. You can try to do what you can to try to get rid of it. But for the most part, you have no control over those things. And, and that's just something physical. But there's many, many things in the child's life that they have no control over. And one of the things that we covered in chapter two of the um, a character unit is a lot of children, they... You know, they face difficulties because parents decide to divorce. They don't have control over their parents divorcing, you know, and all these custody battles and who gets the children when and who gets them this time and so forth. Uh, and so these things, but they, they do impact the child's life. And so what we see here with letter B is a nice little transition leading up from character unit to the acceptance unit. And, of course, the answer to that is no. <coughs> you don't. And uh, letter C there is, why is it important to focus on the things in your life you can control? Why is it important to focus on the things in your life that you can control? This is what you're asking your students. And some of the answers, uh, you know, might be, um, you know, so you can develop your full potential in those areas and become a better person. In fact, um, uh, in the acceptance unit, let me see here. It's um, that's one. Page one, page one, page one, paragraph two. So why is it important to focus on the things in your life you can control? Well, uh, under the cans and cannots of life, the first paragraph or sentence there says, "Here's the bottom line." There will be things in your life that you will not be able to change, and there will be things that you can. When you are able to make a distinction between the two and focus on what you can change, you will demonstrate acceptance of who you are as a unique person. Okay, And we don't want them to forget that because each and every one of them are very unique individuals. And they have to recognize that uniqueness within themselves, but also their focus should not be on things that they have no control over. <clears throat> you know, it should be on what they, in this case, what we're focusing on, the building of a positive character. What they can control is their thoughts, their feelings, and their actions, okay? Because that's what we're going to be dealing with in this lesson here um, as we move forward. In our next class, we're going to start moving into the lesson as we get into procedure two here. Um, and we're going to start getting into some of the um, uh, the lesson on page um, uh, one, two, and three when we get into the note to the student. Um, and uh, next class will be um, 1.23, p.m. Central Standard Time. So please, uh, you know, read forward a little bit in your book so um, we can all be on the same page. And again, if you haven't had the opportunity, kind of go back and and listen to the previous lessons, uh, at least the last one or two to get you caught up with where we are today. Thank you very much, and we look forward to seeing you for the next class.